Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Psalms and chapter 19. We're going to start in verse 7. And then verse 10 is like the refrain. Love the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. I look forward to the day when we meet up there and David can teach us the original yeah. melodies that he had for these. What should we thank our Heavenly Father for? If you have something to be thankful for, just raise your hand and uh, I'll give you the microphone. I'm assuming everybody doesn't want to be on camera, so. But we can pass the microphone. I'm going to praise him for just the beautiful spring weather we've yes. been having. Mm. Finally get some sunshine. Yes. <laughs> that was really nice this week. Yes, I'm very grateful for sunshine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Someone else. Something you'd like to thank the Lord for. I was praying by the creek and I was just hearing the music of the creek. and I was saying thank you, Father, for giving me this creek and the music from it. It's so restful. I'm really thankful that with the opposition that we're having and we're experiencing right now. I'm thankful that God's giving me peace about it and about the future. Very grateful for that. Anybody else? What should we request? Um, I'm going to ask for prayers for our daughter. Okay. That the um, 
what they found on the MRI is just scar tissue. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So your daughter did have brain cancer. Yeah. Okay. And then they found something else recently. Yeah. In the scan. In so the we're, scan, we're, we're yeah. praying that it's yeah. not a reoccurrence. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. just scarring. Yes. What's your daughter's name? Laura. Laura. Okay. Yeah. We'll pray for Laura. Brother Justin. Yeah. Um, I just received an email that my aunt Cheryl has stage four cancer, and the doctors gave her like less than a year to live. Uh, but she's putting her hope in God. Yes. There's always hope when we have our hope in God. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyone else? Stephanie. All of our YouTube prayer requests and mm -hmm. unspoken requests. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I received a letter from a lady named Judith in Ohio, and she asked for prayer for her health and especially her right knee. Let's go to our Father in Heaven in prayer. Our Father in Heaven, our Creator, Jehovah, we are so grateful that you've given us this Sabbath day. So grateful that we can worship you. We can study from your word and learn from your book of nature. We're lifting up Laura to you. Um, she had brain cancer and then it was in remission and now they had another scan and they see something there and we're asking that that would just be scar tissue. We're asking you to keep that cancer from coming back. We ask for Cheryl, who has been diagnosed with cancer. And we ask both Cheryl and Laura that you give them extra peace through this, that they would trust you with their future. Help us all, Father, to be ready to live for you and ready to die. And it's not until we're ready to die that we're truly ready to live in this world. I'm asking, Father, that you would put your words in my mouth. You would cover me with your hand. Keep me from speaking anything or teaching anything that's my own opinion, but let it be your message through me. Speak to each heart here and those that will watch later on YouTube. May your spirit fill up this place in each of our hearts. Cover this place with your blood and bind all the evil angels who would seek to distract or keep this message from being able to go out. We thank you for this and we're asking in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. We're going to learn a lesson from the book of nature. So I need somebody to help me, and you can count for me how many varieties that we have to work here with. So we're going to do an experiment. Uh, it is hard to identify what kinds of trees these are um, because we don't have leaves on them. If it was during the summertime, it would be a little bit easier. Um, although, And also some of these are kind of young growth which is, makes it harder to identify uh, what particular type of tree they are. But uh, does anybody want to guess what this would be? Debbie's going to take a try at it. Birch. Good guess. No, it's not birch. I'll give you a hint. Uh, it, is, it, it does bear nuts. It doesn't look like hickory. I'll give you another hint. Um, it, it has beautiful wood that that makes very nice furniture. Or, yes, this is black walnut. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. See, I was going to look at the bottom of it and see if it was hollow. Yes, <laughs> and it, it does have a hollow spot. So if you have uh, a, a file, you can 
just cut off the new growth and stick it into that hole there. And you don't have to pre-drill. I've made a lot of handles for chainsaw files and flat files. You wow. can just take the new growth, cut off whatever length you want, and just stick it in there. It makes a good, good uh, handle. So we're going to put the black walnut to the test. We're going to see if it can withstand this uh, test here. Okay, it's broken. Yeah. Okay. This one is a mulberry. And the horses love to eat the mulberry leaves. And who else likes to eat the mulberries? Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and who else? Birds. <laughs> birds. <laughs> yes. Antisocial birds. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, mulberry is a real favorite. Uh, makes good firewood. Makes a good shade tree. And definitely good to eat. Mm -hmm. When I was young, we would go to my grandma's house in Nebraska. And sometimes we'd spread out tarps. And Dad and I would climb up there, shake the trees, and shake the mulberries out on the tarps, and then my grandma would freeze them. And then she'd take um, frozen bananas and the frozen mulberries and make a smoothie with them. Oh, that was really good. You said something about mulberry leaves? The horses, my horses really like to oh. eat them. Yeah. And they're also edible for humans, too. You can eat the young leaves, the new growth of the mulberries. Not the tastiest thing to eat, but it definitely keeps you alive if you need to. Mm. All right, well, we're going to put the mulberry to the test. This one has a little bit more. I might have to work on this one a little bit more. A little more fibrous. Yes. My goal is to be able to break it. All right. There's the mulberry. Okay. This has a dried leaf on it, which helps to identify it. Um, this is a sycamore. And uh, who would like to tell us something about the sycamore? If you know something about the sycamore. Of all the trees if, in this area, it has the most sap in it. You can tap it and make a syrup out of it. And so it's one of the heaviest of the woods when it's wet and one of the lightest of the woods when it's dried out. And if you saw lumber from it, and it's not underneath a stack where it's held down while it dries, it'll twist like this, like a propeller blade. It'll just twist around. Uh, we did saw some three by six floor joists for the upper room there out of Sycamore. But if, if they're secured very well in your building, you, it's okay, but you wanna have them fastened securely so that it can't twist around. Does that make a good fire starter? No. Okay, not like pine. Yeah, now the sap of pine, yes, yeah, it does. Okay, I didn't yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very watery. Very. Okay. Yep. All right, we're going to put it to the test. I thought that one was going to be strong. Yeah, sycamore's not. So, how many trees is that so far? Three. 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 All right, thank you for helping me keep track. All right, um, this one makes a um, nice little orange fruit in the fall. Persimmon? Persimmon, yes. Yeah. Yes, you've got it, persimmon. Yes, uh, persimmons have male and female trees. The male trees never produce fruit, but they pollinate. Persimmon's very hardy. You can cut one down and they'll put all these little sprouts out in different spots like sometimes like if you had the parent tree here and you cut it down here you might have some sprouting out 10 feet away or 20 feet away or sprouting up 
It's very hardy. And it um, makes a decent firewood. And we'll put the persimmon to the test. That was pretty easy. Okay, uh, who knows what this is? Pine. It's pine, pine. yes, uh, that's right. I think this is white pine? No, uh, white pine would have darker needles that would be more straight. And uh, this is Virginia scrub pine. And uh, we can pass some. I can give everybody a piece of it and you can crush it and uh, enjoy the smell. Mm -hmm. And if we could put the smell on YouTube, we would, but we can't. Yeah. <laughs> the fragrance, the fragrance of it is such a blessing. I can already smell it and I don't have it very near my nose. We uh, had some volunteers here that were sick and we took some uh, eastern red cedar uh, branches and berries and did we put pine needles in it too? Yeah. Pine needles, yeah, and we um, made a tea out of it on the stove and it was strong medicine. <laughs> it's high in vitamin C. Yeah, I could just live with it. My nose. Yes. All right. We're going to put the pine to the test. That was very easy. Oh, and the, the sap is very good for healing wounds. I've used it with wounds that I've had. It's very healing. How many trees was that? Okay. Uh, now we have... This is a young growth of tulip poplar. And um, who knows what tulip poplar is good for? Furniture. Yes, it's good for furniture. What else? Canoes. It's decent for building. Yes, yes. Nice straight yeah, yeah. They, they oftentimes grow nice and straight with very few branches. They're very strong. Um, they're also very good for the bees. They produce one of the earliest flowers in the spring. And they're prolific lots of flowers have a beautiful uh, the tulip poplar here has beautiful flower that's white and bright orange beautiful flowers all right we're going to put the tulip poplar to the test all right okay Okay, we have one here that is an ash tree. Who can tell us what ash wood is good for? Good firewood. Attracting beetles? It's good firewood. Definitely. Attracting beetles. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. What else? <coughs> ash, is a pretty, ash is also pretty common to um, like oak. In the way of furniture, mm -hmm. it's, yes, it's strong. Yes, makes good flooring. Very dense for flooring. What else is it good for? Your axe handles, shovel handles, hoe handles. Uh, very flexible. They make baseball bats out of ash. You mentioned something about the beetles. Do you want to explain more about that? Yeah, the uh, ash beetles um, when they when they attract um, the beetles that it, it can kill an ash mm -hmm. tree basically from the inside out. Yes. And when when the tree starts to go, then it's really dangerous because the tree mm. will fall over. Yes. With very little force. Yes. Yes. Yes, the emerald ash borer came over from Southeast Asia in pallet lumber, a pallet that was shipped and uh, 
so it's going extinct now. I had some beautiful ash trees here when I got this farm in 2015, and now all the big ones are dead. And they just, yeah, if they're out long enough, they just fall down. All right, we're going to put the ash tree to the test. All right. How many trees is that now? Seven. Seven, okay. This is a red oak. And what is red oak good for? Beautiful furniture. Yep. Flooring. Mm -hmm. Yes. Structural. Yes. Structural framing lumber. Yes. Uh, when it's green, when oak is green and you use it for like floor joists or rafters, it, it can sag under its own weight. But after oak is seasoned out and it's dried out, it's so strong. It has some flexibility, but it, it will keep its, keep its position. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put this red oak to the test. Mm. Mm. That's what you call strong enough to bend. It's, 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 it's not actually broken, it just split it in half. This is a Titus Mortis comedy hour. <laughs> Yeah, so far, this one's been the strongest that we have uh, dealt with. What number is this now? Number eight. Okay. No, oh, thank you. Uh, who knows what this is? Cedar? It is cedar. That is right. That is correct. Yes. Uh. Take a piece of cedar and crush it and see if it smells better than your pine. Okay. So, uh, do you like the cedar smell better or the pine better? Cedar. 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 Yeah. Yeah, me too. I like the smell of the pine, but these this eastern red cedar has a even better smell. So good. Uh, who can tell us something about this eastern red cedar? Natural bug repellent. Natural bug repellent. Yes, it is. Yes. So if um, you have like wool clothing that you have in a drawer, if you'll put um, pieces of the eastern red cedar in there, it helps to repel those moths that can go in there and eat up your clothes. Also very resistant to decay, makes good fence posts. Yes. Type of thing. Yes. Exciting. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, the um, in the upper room there, those six by six posts are all eastern red cedar. Um, old timers say that a good uh, cedar post will last about forty years in the ground. Uh, I've seen pressure treated posts that lasted about ten years and they started to break off. Uh, get uh, started to rot. The eastern red cedar it, it lasts very, very well. What else would the eastern red cedar be good for? Saunas. Mm, yes, yes. Something else I'm thinking of that the this eastern red cedar provides. It provides berries for the birds. Sometimes when the birds are migrating south, I've seen like a flock of like 50 robins 
in a cedar tree out here eating the berries and resting on their long journey. All right, we are going to put the eastern red cedar to the test. Okay. Here we have, around here we call it a soft maple. We have the hard maple, which is also called the sugar maple. The, and its wood is very hard, which is good for furniture. And then we have this, so, what we call soft maple. Some people call it silver maple. Um, and uh, it is... Uh, a beautiful tree makes good, good shade. <coughs> this kind of soft maple, I've cut it into lumber and it tends to warp quite a bit. But it is fairly strong. Right, we're going to put it to the test. Pretty interesting. <laughs> when you tap it, does it have a difference in the syrup than the hard maple? I yeah, I think there's a little a slight difference, but um, I have some friends here that tap the black walnut uh, trees and beech trees, and the soft maple and the hard maple. So yes, you can tap it. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, we looked at the red oak before. This is, around here we call it a white oak. Um, and This one's more challenging than the, uh, this one's more challenging than the red oak. It almost looks like yarn now. <laughs> it's not really breaking, it's just kind of tearing. That's shredding like slippery elm. Okay, so far, the white oak. It's been the most resilient. Okay, we have this one, which is a sweet gum. And uh, who knows what kind of seeds the sweet gum uh, produces. It makes these, these um, seed heads or, or their balls about that big around and they have little spines on them. They're not really, really sharp, but they're a little bit sharp. You probably wouldn't want to step on them barefooted. Uh, sweet, sweet gum. If you, it's kind of like um, sycamore when, if you have it 
if it's not stacked underneath the weight of a lot of others, then it'll twist and turn like an airplane propeller. Okay. Here we have another variety of elm. Uh, it's this is different than the sweet gum. It's uh, I don't I think it's what they would call a black gum. It's not sweet gum. Uh, so uh, we'll put it to the test. Uh, this gum makes pretty good firewood. It doesn't have as much BTUs or as much fuel value as like oak, but uh, it's it's a good wood. All right. Uh, this one is called sourwood, and it produces very beautiful white flowers in the springtime and uh, you can buy sourwood honey um, it's, it's one of the first flowers to come out in the spring they have a very beautiful smell sourwood doesn't grow very big the biggest sourwood that I've ever seen was about that big in diameter most of the time they only grow to be about that size and then then they're done growing all right, we're going to put the uh, sour wood to the test. That was one of the easiest. Okay. Aha! <laughs> beach. Yes, beach. Uh, what is uh, one unique thing about the beech tree? It keeps its leaves in winter. Yes. So the leaves stay on all through the fall and the winter. And in the spring, the new leaves push off the old ones. And what is the beech tree good for? Nuts. Yes. Nuts. It makes these kind of pyramid shaped nuts. Yes. Um, what else? Good firewood. Um, it makes pretty good lumber. Yep. All right, we are going to put the uh, beech tree to the test. now all right we have one last one here how many was that now Oof. 12, 12? Yeah. all right debbie debbie says 12 uh, i didn't keep track of it so anybody want to guess what this one is i know it's really hard to guess without any leaves i'm gonna say hickory yes <laughs> yeah, i think i know where you're going <laughs> justin's got it <laughs> So, uh, what is the hickory tree good for? Hickory makes beautiful, strong furniture. It does, yes. It uh, makes really good nuts. It does, delicious nuts, yes. Hickory nuts are so good. Uh, what else is hickory good for? Yes, yes, sticks. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you can uh, take the bark and make cordage out of it, like in a wilderness survival situation, you can peel it, use the bark. Uh, old timers tell me that they uh, used to take the ashes from hickory and then feed it to horses and mules and cattle. Uh, they mix the ashes with um, their feed and then is it dewormer, hmm. kill parasites. Hickory is also good to use in cooking. 
because the the hickory wood, I mean, those of a carnivorous nature, they uh, they smoking. use it to smoke meat. Yeah. Yes. But um, smoking vegetables is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, hickory is definitely famous for that. Um, uh, what's something different about hickory that we don't see in most other trees. Versatility. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has so many different uses. So many different uses, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, what's something else that sets hickory apart from the majority of other trees? Strength and resilience. Yes, strength and resilience, definitely. Um, the uh, it has a deep tap root that just goes down, 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 down. And so the, uh, I've seen many trees that got blown over in, in storms and they come up by the roots. You'll see a pine tree and you'll see the big root ball of the pine tree or big root ball of the cedar tree or uh, you'll see uh, even an oak tree, a big root ball sticking up of the oak tree. But, uh, in my 32 years of looking in the woods, I guess I didn't look in the woods much when I, my first year, but uh, from probably four years old on, exploring the woods, walking in the woods, I have never seen a hickory tree come out by the root ball in a storm, ever. Um, and the same is true of the black walnut. The nut trees, pecans, all the nut trees that we have here in this area, pecans, walnuts, the white walnut, black walnut, hickory, they have this really deep tap root. And so when the storm comes, they don't come out by the roots. They bend, but they, they stay rooted. All right, it's time to put the hickory to the test. By the time So we've split it in half, but we're still we're still maintaining our it's still together. It's uh, let's see if I can pull it apart. We've got other people that are trying to break it. <laughs> Jonas, do you want to try? Yeah, I would like to. Let me see. One of the things, oh, if, you, if you notice, the trees that have many strands that are fibrous, 
are very difficult to break. So as Christians, when we are together as a body of Christ, we are stronger than we are, we are alone. Mm -hmm. And as you peel each strand back, that's how you'll eventually break it. Mm -hmm. So as brothers and sisters in Christ, to be strong mm -hmm. against the forces yes. of evil, we need to stand together and pray for each other. Yes. Because there's strength in that community of believers versus single strands. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you, Sister Debbie. That's a very, very important point. Um, united we stand, divided we fall. Yes, as these strands are together, there's a lot more strength um, than if we divide it. Uh, Got it. Ah. I had to go each direction. Mm. I had to twist it that way, that way. And... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Here. You can try that. Yes. So... So, I can't break it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Justin's just pulling me across the floor. There's no way that break. Wow. I think that we could pull all day and we still wouldn't break it. We'd have to hook up Great Heart and stand fast. <laughs> Justin's going to see if it'll hold his weight. <laughs> uh, I'm about 200 pounds. I can't imagine this can hold me. It'll hold you. <laughs> oh, no problem. Oh, wow. wow. That little strand yeah. held 200 pounds. Be good on my back. So look at how small pounds. that is, and we've already fatigued. We've already fatigued this area quite a bit. So we're gonna hang it over here. Good for your grip strength. Feet are up off the ground. <laughs> That's I'm I weigh I currently weigh 140. <clears throat> so it it held two about 200 and would you be like 70 pounds or 80 pounds? 115, right? Oh, 115. Oh, 115. So about 315 with Jonas and his dad, <laughs> and then I was a drop in the bucket compared to that, and we still didn't break it. So let me ask you, why did the hickory tree withstand being broken? Whereas all these others, out of 12, if we remember correctly, we've got about 12 here. Out of all 12, why would the hickory withstand what the 11 others could not withstand? Probably what? because of the amount of fibers yes. in the in the wood itself. Yes. And how did the tree come to have these extra fibers that the other ones didn't have? The design but might have to do with how the root system is and mm -hmm. how it grows, how a creator designed it that way. When I was first thinking about it, I was thinking, okay, well, um, the hickory must be so strong because it has a deeper root system. But as I was thinking about that and considering, I was like, well, no, that's not the secret. That's not the reason because the black walnut has just as deep of a taproot as the hickory. Black walnut is a nut too, and they both have that identical deep taproot. So it's not that. There's another reason why the hickory is stronger than all these others. Can anybody think? I think that uh, our brother Justin here touched on it. 
Why is it stronger than all the others? Want me to tell you? Yeah. Because it was created that way. <laughs> it was created that way by our Creator God, Jehovah. Our Creator has made so many different trees, hundreds of different trees. But He chose to make the hickory tree the strongest in the forest. In this life, Satan will send you temptations. He will send you trials. He will send you opposition. He will send you persecution. Will you be broken by the persecution or by the opposition that Satan sends your way? Will you be broken by people who misunderstand you or misrepresent you or paint you in the false light? When temptation comes, will you allow yourself to be broken down? Or will you, in the strength that your Creator has created you to be, will you stand tall? Will you stand unbroken? This makes me think of a scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we are going to look at verse 17. Very musical sound to hear the pages turning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels. Then we have Acts. Then we have Romans. Then we have 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. A new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That word creature can be translated creation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The same creative power that created the hickory tree to be strong can create you to be strong. Amen. So we have been born into a world of sin with sinful influences. We have chosen sin ourselves and therefore we have become weak and all of us have become broken by the opposition of Satan and by temptation. And we've all been broken. But let's not lose hope because we can go to our Heavenly Father and we can say, Father, I have been broken down, broken apart by this opposition that Satan has brought to me. We can say, Father in Heaven, I have broken myself down because of my own choices to sin and I'm a weak tree that's been completely broken. And then your Heavenly Father, you ask and you say, please create me into a new person. And then your Heavenly Father says, my son or my daughter, yes, I am creating you into a new person. And the same creation, the same creative power that spoke the world into existence, the same creative power that formed Adam from the clay and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, the same creative power 
will come into you. And where you used to be a weak tree that got broken down at every storm, then you become strong like the hickory tree. And then when the persecution comes, when the opposition comes, when the temptations comes, you will not be broken. You will hold together. Let's look in chapter 4. Chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. We're going to look at verse, verses 6 through 9. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Second Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4 6 through 9. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Because of this creative power that is working in our lives. Let us turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51, starting in verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away, from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Have you seen a tree? that the heart of it has been rotted out. Yes. Because of sin and other sins against us, because of Satan, our heart has been rotted out. And that creates a weakness in the tree. So that when the storm comes, that tree will snap. It'll be broken. But we go to our Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, Jesus, Yeshua. 
And we say, Father, please, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua, create in me a clean heart. Give me a new heart. Give me a clean heart. And then we hear our Father say, My son, my daughter, you have asked for the best gift. Yes, I give you a new heart. When you have a new heart and a new mind, you're a new person. And you find yourself growing strong again. So, let us remember the lesson that we have learned from the hickory tree. No matter how weak or how broken we have been in our past, we can be recreated by the power of our Creator, Jehovah God. We can be recreated into something strong that will not be broken. Because His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Is there anything else, any thoughts that the Holy Spirit has given you while we have been learning? Go ahead, brother. I'm reminded of the parable that Jesus taught about the sower and, yes. and the seeds. Yes. And the, how it parallels with what you just did. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. So many different seeds. So many different soils. Yeah. That path that was beaten down and the seed fell on that ground and it couldn't germinate because the ground was too hard. The, the soil wasn't covering that seed. If your heart is hard, ask your Father in heaven and say, break up this hardness in my heart. The Bible says, break up your fallow ground. The Bible says, so to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness upon you, till he comes and rains righteousness upon you. So you have fallow ground and it becomes hard. The, the rain has packed it down. The soil is hard, has not been plowed. There's briars growing in it. There's roots growing in it. But when that fallow ground is broken up, then the seed can be buried in there. And then the warmth of the sun and the rain comes and softens that seed. And then when, when the conditions are ripe, then that kernel of wheat or that seed corn comes springing out a beautiful green. If your heart is hard, Ask God to rip through your heart to take the plowshare of repentance and break up the hardness of your heart. And He will do it. And after the, the hardness of your heart is broken up, then the seed of His truth, the seed of His word can grow. And you'll see something beautiful growing out of the barren ground. Your life has been barren for so long. <coughs> Ask the Father. In the name of His Son, Jesus, Yeshua. He'll break up that hard ground. Yes. Any other thoughts? Can we sing How Firm a Foundation? Yes. Let's do that. <clears throat> yes, brother. Yeah, when you mentioned that, it reminded me of uh, Paul's entreaty to the Lord. He had, he had a thorn in the flesh, mm. and he requested the Lord to remove it, and... He was told, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. So we may have things we want removed, but with God's power, we may not have them removed, but we can overcome Yes. and, and bear, bear it. Yes. What was the reference there? 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Yes. I had mentioned that quotation earlier, but I didn't remember the reference. Thank you for helping me there. Um, it's so much better together when we can learn from God's Word together. Yes. Yes. Uh, there are times when God will take the trial away from you. But oftentimes, He says, My son, my daughter, I am with you in the trial. Remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. My Father, if it be possible, take what from me? This cup. 
take this cup away from me. From me, yes. Nevertheless, not as I will, but whose will be done. God's will. That's right. Yes, he said, Father, your will be done. So when you're in the trial, you can ask him to take that trial away, and he may do it. Sometimes he does. But he does not always take the trial away. He does not propose to take all your trials away, but he will be with you in your trials. Satan will try to introduce doubt in your mind to break <coughs> you down. Believe that your Heavenly Father has your best interest at heart. and He will not allow you to go through more heat than you can bear. He will not allow you to go through more trial than what you can bear. All right, we're going to sing a song, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, who unto the Savior for refuge have fled. Fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, Upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, The rivers of sorrow shall not overflow. For I will be with thee thy troubles to bless, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not <coughs> hurt thee, I only design, Thy dross to consume, and thy gold to refine. The soul that on Jesus doth lean for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell, should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee. I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Nebuchadnezzar said, I will burn you alive in my furnace because you will not bow down to my image. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to have complete control of the mind and the conscience, the bodies of those three young men, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. But they said, no. If you burn us alive, We will not bow. But our God is able to deliver us. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, O king. Daniel 3, 17 and 18. 
So Daniel said, Our God is able to deliver us from your burning fiery furnace. But if he does not deliver us from it, if you do put us in this fire, and if we do burn up, we still will not bow down before your image. In your life, you will have people pressuring you. They want to be the God. They don't want you to obey the Creator, Jehovah God of the heavens. They want you to obey them and give them unreserved obedience. Don't do it. Make your Heavenly Father your number one, the one that you answer to. He is the one you will stand before on Judgment Day one day. Don't allow yourself to be intimidated, pushed around, manipulated, to violate, to go against what you know God is calling you to do in your life. Stand firm. Do not allow people, their opposition, their manipulation, to make you, break you down. You have supernatural strength in the power that God gives you to be unbroken. They may try. They may try to break you. But in the strength of the Creator's power, because of who He has created you to be, you can remain intact and unbroken. Our Father in Heaven, we are thankful for the lesson that You have taught us from the hickory tree. We are all weak trees, easily broken by the temptations, by the storms, by the opposition of evil people. So we're asking for you to do a new thing, to create us into something different than what we were born. We were born a weak tree, easily broken. We ask, Father, for this miracle, that you would recreate us, that we would be born again, that we would become strong, as you want us to be. Thank you for making this change by your creative power. Bless each one here that we would remain unbroken and those that also that are joining us on YouTube. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. In his name we pray. Amen.